In a previous video, we showed how to construct the acceleration vector by taking the derivative of the velocity vector. If you haven't seen that video, I encourage you to watch it before this one. The video is called Derivative of the Velocity Vector, Motion Along a Straight Line. In that one-dimensional motion, when the object is moving along a straight line, we showed that we get acceleration when the object is speeding up or slowing down. When the velocity and the acceleration vectors are pointing in the same direction, the object moves faster in that direction. When the velocity and acceleration vectors are pointing in the opposite directions, the object slows down. Now I want to consider a different configuration. Let's consider the case where an object is moving at a constant speed around a perfect circle. Constant speed around a circle. In this situation, I want you to tell me, what is the object's acceleration? Take a little time to think about it. Pause the video. When you think you have a well-reasoned answer, come back and rejoin the video again. Again, the question is, what is the acceleration here? The most common response I get from students is that there is zero acceleration. Why? Well, the object is not speeding up or slowing down, right? Its speed is constant. However, acceleration is not the derivative of speed. Instead, the acceleration vector is the derivative of the velocity vector. So here I'm showing you the velocity vector in blue here. Do you see it changing? The magnitude of the velocity vector is constant, but its direction is changing, right? We've stated before that the velocity is tangent to the path, and because that path is changing direction, the velocity must be changing direction too. The speed is constant, but the velocity vector is changing because the direction is changing. Therefore, we have acceleration. So let's think about something. In which direction is the acceleration vector pointing? Look at that velocity vector. Think about how it's changing. In which direction is the acceleration pointing? Can you look at it and tell me? Think about it. Well, if you haven't seen this before, it's a little difficulty to sort of figure it out. But to figure it out, I want to go back to the definition of acceleration as the derivative of the velocity vector and to construct, once again, the acceleration vector using that definition of a derivative. Now remember, to construct the derivative, what I need to do is look at the velocity at the current time and also the velocity a little bit into the future, a future a time into the future delta t. With this slider, I can separate those two times and I can separate the two velocities. So the solid blue arrow, that's the velocity at the current time. The dashed blue arrow, that's the velocity, in this case, 0 0.58 seconds into the future. Now to help with the next step, what I'm going to do is show both those velocity vectors uh, arranged together, tail to tail. There they are right in the center of the circle. Why do I do that? Well, let me stop this real quick. What I want to do is take the difference between those two velocities. To take the difference, I arrange them tail to tail, and then their difference is, let's see, it's this pink vector right here, yes? It's, it's the vector that would go from the tip of the solid blue one to the tip of the dashed blue one. There's my change in velocity. That's the change in velocity when these velocities are separated by 0.58 seconds in time. What I need to do, or what I'm going to do, is I'm going to take that delta t go to zero. I'm going to let that time difference go to zero. And look what happens as the two velocities move in towards each other, look at the difference. Look what happens to the difference. Look at what happens to dv, this change in velocity. Now I want you to observe this. I want, I want you to engage your brain. Take a moment and try to answer the following questions. What happens to the magnitude of dv 
as I let dt get smaller, as I let delta t get smaller, right? And what happens to the direction of dv as I let dv get smaller? Put it in your own words. What happens to the magnitude of dv, when, in other words, the change in velocity, the difference between the velocity vectors, and what happens to the direction? Yeah, look at it, think about it. Pause if you need to. So in the limit, as delta t goes to zero, the magnitude of dv gets really small, right? <laughs> that's not surprising because the, the tips of these two vectors, the blue vector and the dash blue vector, get, they get really close to each other. So the magnitude of, of that change in velocity gets very small. But the direction, look at the direction. The direction gets more and more perpendicular to the current velocity vector, the solid blue velocity vector. gets more and more perpendicular to that one. Yeah, do you see it? That's important. So finally, what we're going to do here is we're going to take this change in velocity, the, the, pink, the pink arrow right there, the pink vector, there's the change in velocity, and we're going, going to divide it by delta t, right? We need the change in velocity divided by a change in time. That'd be the rate of change of the velocity. So that difference, the delta v divided by delta t, is going to be this red vector right there. So the, the pink one, the pink vector is still there. And what I'm doing is I'm dividing by delta t. So I'm dividing, in this case, I'm dividing by 0.59 seconds to get the red vector. Now watch what happens as I let delta t go to zero, right? The delta v goes to zero and the delta t goes to zero. So the red vector does not go to zero, right? It sort of approaches some finite value or some finite magnitude. Yeah, but also what hap look what happens to the direction of the, the acceleration vector. As delta t goes to zero, this red vector, the acceleration vector, becomes perpendicular to the velocity vector. Right? As I let, let delta t get really small, to your eyeball, this almost looks perfectly, perfectly perpendicular. And in the limit, as that delta t goes to zero, it does become perpendicular. Now let's put it in motion, and we can see what happens. As this, again, as this delta t goes to zero, the red vector, which is the change in velocity divided by the change in time, as delta t goes to zero, that, that red vector becomes the acceleration. All right, so there we go. So let me put this red vector, the acceleration vector, on the point now. And maybe I can get rid of um, these vectors right there. And there's a result, OK? Let me restate our result. We have an object that's moving around in a circle at constant speed. Yes, its speed is not changing. So at first glance, if the speed is not changing, you might say there's no acceleration. But wait a second, there is acceleration because that velocity vector is changing its direction. When the velocity vector changes its direction, you get a component of acceleration towards the center of the circle. That's what we see there with that red arrow. Although we're going at a constant speed, we have, a, we have an acceleration inward. That acceleration inward is called the centripetal acceleration. And check out this. I'm going to flip the direction of motion. I'm, instead of going around uh, counterclockwise, I'm going to tell it to go around clockwise. Yeah, did you see what happened? The velocity vector flipped its direction, right? The velocity vector always points in the direction of motion. But the acceleration vector, the A, its centripetal acceleration, it's still pointing towards the center, right? Doesn't matter which way we're going around, clockwise, counterclockwise. I guess that one's clockwise. That acceleration is toward the center. Velocity, of course, flips its direction around, but the centripetal acceleration, again, toward the center. All right, so there we have our result for this video.